hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, this Mothership GM prep session. Uh, my name is Celeste Konowich. I am a full-time designer uh, in the community as well as a streamer, a podcaster. You might have seen me before here on Roll20. I was the GM for a science fantasy show called Burn Bright. But that's not what we're talking about today. We are talking about Mothership, uh, which is a sci-fi horror game. So if you all aren't familiar with Mothership, uh, it is a game made by Tuesday Night Games. It is a tabletop role-playing game. And in exciting news, it has just recently uh, published on Roll20 as a starter bundle. Uh, I think just yesterday this dropped. So right now you can head over to Roll20 and grab the starter set for this game, which includes everything you need to know, the player like basic rules, as well as this really awesome one-shot module that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, so the module itself, you can see here on my screen, uh, is uh, The Haunting of Epsilon 14. Uh, so we are going to be, you know, kind of covering the basics of this game. I'm going to be showing you around what it looks like inside Roll20, what you can expect uh, when you purchase this, this bundle. And then also, of course, we're going to do a little GM prep. You know, what I would do before a game of this actually starts, how I would go in, look at the module, and prepare for session one. Uh, so I, uh, yes, thank you so much to our mods in chat, that salty ginger. Uh, I should remind everybody here, this is a horror game. Uh, that means that over the course of this game, we will probably, or the course of this prep session, uh, we will probably see some mechanics in here that refer to things like body horror, panic mechanics, and stress are a big, interesting part of mothership. Uh, so if those words, if those appearing on the screen, uh, you know, you're, you're not in headspace for that this may not be the stream for you to watch um of course also in this game there are tables that refer to uh, drug use sex so these things will come up potentially as we are looking at the rules but with that out of the way let's uh let's dive in here so the haunting of Ep epsilon 14 uh i was really really stoked to see that there is a great one shot module out for mothership so a little bit of my background with this game i think two years ago three years ago whenever cons were still a thing uh i was at pax unplugged and i happened to walk by the tuesday night gaming booth and i saw this really really awesome setup of just these very cool zines so for those of you who don't know what a zine is it's like these little paperback booklets. I actually have it still here. So it was a bunch of these really cool, very graphically laid out interesting things that I was immediately pulled over to that table. And I think within like five minutes, uh, the, guy, the guy at the booth had sold me, I mean, the basic starter player guide, all of the modules they had made just because the game itself sounded so cool and was so interesting graphically and also in terms of rules. What's really great about Mothership is it's a very rules light game, which I think I, I can speak for all of us when I say that's that's pretty rare to find in a science fiction game. Usually you're dealing with huge amounts of just knowledge, books, rules. Mothership has really keenly distilled it down into these tiny little pages and now for virtual tabletops. Because the rules are so based, you know, on tables and just the need to knows, it integrates super, super well for virtual tabletops. So I was really, really excited when Roll20 asked me to come in here and talk about about the new module and kind of show it off uh, because there's some really good stuff in here. So, I mean, let's just even get started looking at what's going on here. So if you haven't seen Roll20 before, if you haven't played a game in Roll20 before, this screen might look strange to you, but don't worry, I'll walk you around it. Uh, so here in the very center, you know, where my mouse is kind of flying around, we have this basic virtual tabletop page. Uh, so this is already inside the game that I have created, this game of Mothership. So this is where players, when they log into the game for the first time, this is exactly what they would see. So in this main center here, we of course have the cover, and this screen here will change as I use maps or handouts. I can drop tokens onto this screen. And then also, of course, on the right-hand side, we have our bar where whenever we roll something or access a rule, click a button, 
basically a little command will come up in here. As you guys can see, I was playing around with some of the functions, so I already have some information in here, but I promise I'll do it again uh, so you all can see what I'm doing here. So some other cool features of this, this game, whenever you get a module through Roll20, it already comes equipped with everything you need to play the game. So that means handouts, maps, uh, the rules are built into this game. Uh, so up here, for example, on our page toolbar, if we scroll this down, we can see all the different options that come with this game. So we've got like a relational map, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but man, look at that cool graphic style. This is like such a hallmark of Mothership, using bold colors, bold lines, and using every single inch of the page, whether that be virtual or literally, I mean, you can look at the back of the book, it's it's got rules already on the back of the book. That's that's very much the spirit of Tuesday Night Games and this, this game in particular. Um, use space well, use space efficiently, and um, it's really, really cool. And uh, of course, we also, we have a location map, which is just, I love this. This is something you might see like on the computer screen, uh, you know, inside the game. You can easily show things like this to your players. So whenever you move uh, this screen as a GM, you can choose what they do and do not see as players. So this is like a handout that you would give at some point here. Um, but yeah, the main function, like where you're going to be looking, where we can explore this module is, of course, if we navigate up here to all of these little toolbars, we have, ah, our journal. So in the journal, we have the module. All of these tabs come preloaded when you do pick up uh, the module itself. So, hey, let's look at what we've got going on. Oh, ton of stuff. Uh, start here. Cool. I love it. All right. So starting things off, uh, a one shot for Mothership sci-fi horror RPG. Uh, what I really, really like about this, this is something that just caught my attention I love every time Roll20 puts like a new module up because we get to see how much more accessible it becomes in terms of features. So what's really great is that there's a built-in like using this product section. So we, I was really excited to see there are audio logs that have been included for this adventure. It gives you a little breakdown of where to find player handouts. So, you know, looking at the Roll20 journal in the handouts folder. So again, that's our journal here. And we can see, ooh, handouts that are all ready for us to go. We can see our NPC tokens. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, we have our player map, which, of course, tells us how to reveal portions of it or hide portions of it from our players, which is very, very cool. Um, it gives you instructions on how to deal with dynamic lighting, NPC tokens, and an invisible monster token. What is that about? I will say I wanted to give you you all kind of the same experience of like just opening this up as a GM and, you know, finding everything. So I only read through this once really, really quickly. So I'm going to be discovering things along with you all today as we go through and prep this module. But yeah, I mean, you know what? Let's go ahead and even before we dive into the module... I want to look at what my players would be looking at. How do we go about making characters for this game? What are my players going to be looking at here? So to add a new player to the game, I'm simply, I'm already still in my journal. And I'm going to click add here. I'm going to add a character. Oh, okay. That's my my suggested name. Iplep. Iplep Oni. Good. All right. That sounds great. I love that. It's going to be controlled by me because it's my secret player. Okay, and I'm going to save. And then I'm going to go ahead and open this up here. Oh, this is so cool. Hey, oh, look at that character sheet. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So like I was saying, one of the reasons I really like Mothership is because it's very rules light. There are really only four key stats in this game. So strength, speed, intellect, and combat. So when you first you make your character, you roll those numbers. Uh, this is also one of the ga those games that only uses D10s to roll. So really nice, really easy. You, of course, can just use your dice roller up here uh, over if you want to roll things here. Or you can directly click all over the character sheet once this is filled in. But, I mean, look at this. Look how beautiful this is. And then, of course, we pick our skills when we start, and we'll get a little bit more into that. And then your sanity, your fear. Oh, my God, look. Oh, if you scroll over them, 
It tells you. I don't even have to remember things. So sanity. Sanity is your ability to explain away logical inconsistencies in the universe, rationalize and make sense out of chaos, detect illusions and mimicry, and think quickly under pressure. Oh boy, I bet we could all use high scores in that. Uh, sanity. So fear. Fear is how well you can cope with emotional trauma. Uh, like I said, this game is... It is a horror game. It is very much about surviving the things around you and the horrible things you do see in space. How well you deal with that constant stress uh, and whether or not that stress causes you to panic in intense situations. Um, that is the big challenge in this game. To keep your stress low so you can survive is a big part of Mothership, uh, which makes it very scary and also very fun. Um but, you know, enough of that. What I don't want to fill this in. I don't want to fill this in by myself. Good thing we can go up to the settings tab here and we can launch what's called the character mancer. So this is, uh, these are my favorite. So basically the character mancer is a, an awesome way. It walks you through making the character. So let's, let's go ahead and do it. Let's take a look at the character mancer. And this is something that comes with if you just pick up the starting set here. Yeah, it. I know, salty sweet. Yeah, it. It. Mothership has character mancer support. I know. It is wild. So you look at it here. You know, it's like welcome. Okay, this is gonna help you walk through making a character. All right, cool. Let's do it. All right. So stats. So Mothership uses d10s for everything, like I mentioned. So at the beginning, you'll roll six d10 to generate each stat. A stat of thirty is about average. Uh, but we can just click the button and roll. And roll. Okay. Oh my God. Let's do it. Rolling. Wow. I'm really good. Okay. So if a 30 is average, I rolled a 41 strength, a 45 speed. That's really good. Um, my intellect 33 and my combat only 20 though. So that's, that's kind of rough. So as the basic rule in mothership, a lot of the time you are trying to roll under your scores here. So if I was making a strength roll, I have a pretty good chance of, you know, if I'm rolling a D100, of getting under 41 uh, but maybe for combat that's that's not going to be so great so higher numbers are good for me most of the time on my character sheet so okay so I rolled these stats that's pretty good uh, so what is my next step here so now I just go ahead and I click this arrow <gasps> oh, and I select my class oh my god look at this art you guys I know last time I did one of these preview streams on Roll20, uh, people were like, you just oohed over the art for two hours. Well, I'm going to do it again because um, <laughs> I just love the graphic design of Mothership. It's just it's so interesting. So continuing with its like rules light theme, uh, there are only four classes in this game. So you have your Marine. So, of course, when you think of a lot of, like, sci-fi movies, sci-fi tropes, you have your, you know, like, space armor, big guns, combat-ready marine. So, here we go. Marines are here to shoot bugs and chew bubblegum. They're handy in a fight and good when grouped together. But whenever a marine panics, it might cause problems for the rest of the crew. If you have... Ooh, oh, no. Here we go. Oh, no, I accidentally clicked it. It's okay. I can just go back. That's amazing. All right, I don't want to be your main. Wow, that was really easy. I can just click the arrows and go back. Even if you mess up, <laughs> it's easy. So there you go. There you go. Uh, <laughs> so our second class that we have here is our scientist. So, of course, the doctors, researchers, anyone who wants to slice open aliens or infected crew members with a scalpel. Great. Okay, that's that's comforting. Uh, we have our teamster, which uh, teamsters are the rough and tumble crew and workers out in space. If Ripley from Aliens is your hero, you'll want to play a teamster. So great, like you're you know you all around uh, skilled individuals are going to be your teamsters, or you can be an android. Uh, which I always thought was a really interesting choice for one of the classes, but androids are a terrifying and exciting addition to any crew. They tend to unnerve other crew with their cold inhumanity. Uh, wow, that's really that's really rad. It's very metal. Oh my gosh. Okay, so do we want to be a marine? I mean, my combat's pretty garbage, so I don't think I want to be a marine. Um, my intellect is okay, but my strength and my speed were good. So you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna pick an android. 
I'm going to be like a smarty pants, smarty pants android that's like good with computers, oh, very fast. I'm like one of those frighteningly fast machines. Oh, I mean, I'm a fast zombie. That's very scary. So uh, what's really great is that when you pick your class, it does influence your stats a little bit. So it raises things and lower things because each of the classes has their inherent bonuses. So the character mancer just does all that math for you. So you can really just make a character very, very quickly. And these other four uh, stats that you get here, sanity, fear, body, and armor, these are basically calculated using your four stats. So that's more math that the character mancer has just done for you. And so at this point, we're basically ready to go with all of our numbers. Um, yeah, radium skill. Pretty much everybody in the original alien is a teamster. Um, so, yep, that is totally accurate. And um, yeah, so cool. I mean, look, we, we've got uh, we've got our skills already picked as an android. We've got our stress effect, which is like the special class feature. Everybody gets a different one of these. So fear saves made in the presence of androids have disadvantage. Yes, because I am I am cold and calculating. Uplip. Uh Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and click through. Oh, nice. So now I get a full view of all of the skills in this game. It looks like I have three points to spend here. Uh, so these are, of course, all of the skills here. And something I really like about the skills is they all work in trees. So if you want to get something from the middle column, uh, then you have to start with something on the left side. So like since I'm trained in computers, I can take hacking or engineering. But if I wasn't trained in computers, these would be grayed out. And to take something here, I have to complete this full tree. Uh, so that's really cool. It's just very, this is very elegant. And I really like how big and bold all the buttons are. I'm not confused at all. Um, hey, McFappins, thank you so much. I'm so glad you enjoyed Burn Bright. Oh man, thanks guys. Thanks for being here. This game is very scary <laughs> compared to Burn Bright. I had the opportunity to run a game of Mothership uh, for a Roll20 event recently that it we were and we were also like the really really late night closing game and I definitely my poor players were terrified uh by the end of the night but yeah okay what should my uh what should my android be good at so I already have mathematics and computers cool um oh thank you that salty ginger if you want to check out a playthrough of mothership uh you can totally follow that link and check it out uh all right, so I think I'm going to take, oh, I don't know, driving, piloting, art, archaeology, military training, rim-wise. Oh, my God. I love when you hover over things. It just reads it for you. Oh, you can't see it on my screen. <laughs> it's hidden by my head. All right. You know what? I, I think I, I'm going to pull a data. I'm going to pull a lieutenant data and take some art here. And then, uh, you know what? Hacking sounds like it'd be good. Cool. So those are my points. So what's next? I choose my equipment. Oh, how do you pronounce the, th the first one of the third column? Oh, for the skills? Sophantology. Oh, so apparently that's alien psychology. Sophantology. Oh, that's cool. Then xenobiology, alien biology, surgery, cybernetics. Robotics, artificial intelligence. Wow, these are cool. Yeah. FTL travel. Whoa. Xenoerastriacism. Obscure alien mysticism, religion, and belief. Oh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I like this skill too. Jury rigging, makeshift repairs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like using a big suit to fight an alien? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, radium skill, yeah, so that means they know some actual alien critters. Oh, yeah, aliens are a huge thing in this game. The four classes don't necessarily lend themselves to being aliens, but there's a lot of hostile aliens in this in this game, for sure. All right, so my next screen, choosing equipment. Uh, wow, look, choose an equipment package. That's great, so I don't have to shop through a bunch of stuff. Ooh, okay, so the packages are examination extermination, exploration, excavation, and custom. Okay, well, 
let me see custom mm -hmm. i want to look at what extermination what's in here oh my god smg frag grenades standard battle dress heads up display body cam short range comms stim packs electronic toolkit wow that seems pretty pretty rad uh let's see uh yeah how do you have a sci-fi horror game without hostile aliens no it doesn't work um, but, but the aliens in this game are very, um, <laughs> gross, <laughs> gross is one word for it. Body horror is a really big thing, uh, in Mothership. So, and it comes up in this one shot too. So we'll, we'll see a little bit about that. Um, okay. But examination maybe. So a scalpel, a uh, scalpel, a trink pistol, stun baton, hazard suit, med scanner, Automed, pain pills, stim pack, cybernetic diagnostic scanner. Well, this all sounds cool. This sounds like more, I think, what my Android would be into here. Um, yeah, okay, let's do it. Oh my gosh, review. Is that it? Wow, okay. Take a moment, see. Yep, class, my skills, equipment. Oh, I didn't roll these. Hang on. Oh, yeah, cool. So I can roll. So my starting credits. So obviously credits are like the money system in this game. So I'm going to go ahead and roll. How much money do I have? Okay, 250 money. That seems pretty good. Um, another thing I really like about this game is you can roll for a trinket and like a patch that you have on your person. They don't have any like mechanical benefit, but they can kind of, you know, help you role play or inform what's up with your character. So let's check out some of these trinkets. Uh, the trinket tables and the patches in this game are excellent. So let's see, trinket here. What do I get? A pamphlet interpreting sheep dreams. Oh, that feels very, <laughs> that feels very Android. Oh, do I dream of electric sheep? I do. Um, let's see some other trinkets though, cause it's fun. A golf club, a putter. That's <laughs> okay. That's very weirdly specific. Dog tags, an heirloom. Oh, that's sweet. That could be informative. Uh, a gyroscope, uh, a bent, a bent tin gyroscope. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, pamphlet, the indifferent stars. Tarot cards, worn, pyrite, gilded edges. Okay, that's that's cool as heck. All right, I'm keeping some tarot cards. Whoa, cool. All right, and then here's, I'm going to roll for the patch that's like somewhere on my, my gear. A poker hand. Dead man's hand? Ooh. Okay, I want to look at other ones though. One size fits all? A picture of a grenade? <laughs> oh, yeah. Just a little, a little heart. Blood type. For my reference patch, that would be ironic, since I'm a cyborg. I'm sorry, Android, that there's a difference. Oh, a pinup mechanic patch, yeah. That's cute. Heck yeah, heck yeah. All right, I'm, I'm picking that. <laughs> uh, yes, Robo Goblin, the mess stars. Uh, it's good, <laughs> it's good, uh, good stuff. Yep, McFappin's blood type unleaded. That that would be a good one. That would be a good one. Well, I'm gonna do my little pinup mechanic. I think that's cute. I think my uh my Android wants to be cute. Iplep. Okay, and then we got a review, and bam, <gasps> done. Oh my god. So that is it. That's all I need to do for my character mancer. Um, and what's really great is that that took maybe less than five minutes, uh, which is just incredible. <laughs> I know it's always so hard getting started with new games and trying to walk through all your players at once through making characters. And this just does it for you. So yeah, that's the character mancer. So you get the character mancer if you just pick up the starting rules. You don't even have to pick up the one shot module. But I mean, why wouldn't you? Because it's included with the starter set. So yeah, cool. So now I know that is what my characters, uh, my players are going to go through, making their characters. Um, God, look how gorgeous that is. I love all the circles, the bold lines. Very clear, easy to see. Love it. Love it. Oh, and cool. So whenever I want to roll something, like if I was rolling my linguistics, uh, I would select if I have normal or advantage or disadvantage. 
Uh, so advantage or disadvantage works how you think it might. You get to roll something twice and take the higher result uh, if you have advantage. Or if you have disadvantage, you have to roll something twice and then take the lower number. Um, so, cool. Yeah. Strength here. Will it do the roll? No modifier. <gasps> Yay! I think it did it. So, and you can see... So I went ahead and I rolled a 48 on my linguistics uh, with my target being 51. So there you go. So that is how you roll uh, as a character. You basically just click on any of your stuff on here. So it makes it really, really super duper easy. So that's pretty cool that the character mancer is here for Mothership. Uh, so right away, you can have your characters ready to go uh, and dive in to this module. So let's go ahead and go back to the... Ooh. The main screen. Look at this creepy asteroid. Oh boy, what's going on here? So let's see. Let's get ready. Let's prep this adventure, shall we? All right, so let's go back to start here. That seems like a really good place to start. So yeah, thank you for playing The Haunting of Epsilon 14. Uh, thank you, I'm happy to be here. So, yep, our audio logs, player handouts, player map, NPC tokens. All right, that all seems pretty straightforward. So I'm going to close that up. And then, oh, let's look at the credit page because it's always important to credit people. So written by DJ Chapman, layout by Sean McCoy, Roll20 conversion by Nick Bradley. And, of course, this is from Tuesday Night Games. Thank you all. You did a great job. Uh, and then the adventure. So the introduction. Ooh. Ooh. Let's read this. Okay. Oh, man, you can't see it. My, my thing doesn't scroll down that far. That's okay. That's okay. During a routine cargo job on a remote asteroid mining base, you learn that one of the workers has disappeared. No blood. No body. No record of the airlock opening. Just gone. And that's not the only unexplainable thing that's been hap happening on Epsilon 14. What is the alien material at the heart of this asteroid? What do the weird events around the base have to do with it? Who, if anyone, can be trusted? And can you make it out alive before you also disappear? Ooh, this is going to be scary. Uh, very cool. So that's our introduction here. I should say... Uh, if any of you here in the chat are planning to be players in this game, uh, there might be some spoilers. There will definitely be some spoilers in here. So all of you have to promise me right now that you're going to be the GMs for this really awesome game. And uh, there we go. I've said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, chat folks. Uh, it is really, really simple uh, to make characters with the character mancer. I am honestly never going to make these characters for this game with pen and paper ever again. It was just so easy. I love when things are easy. Uh, so yes, we go to the warden's notes, which they have helpfully put a, a big lock icon on to let you know that, hey, uh, if you're a player, don't go in here. So that's great. That's very thoughtful. All right. So warden notes. And in this game, uh, the game master is referred to as the warden, which is very cool. Uh, so I will be your warden for this evening. Uh, yes, special GM Pinky Promise. Thank you, McFappins. So let's see. What do they have to tell us? What is our secret? What is our secrets? NPC disappearance. So every 10 minutes of real time or every one to two hours of game time, the monster strikes. Roll a D10 on the NPC chart to see which NPC is killed. If a PC is alone, the monster will attack them instead. Oh, wow, wow. Okay, so I guess what I would do reading that is I would probably find like a timer app to be running during this game. So that's good. That's something to note for, for what I'll need for prep. But wow, that's very scary. Okay, so move monster movement. Whenever the crew members enter a new location on the map, roll 1d10. If the number rolled matches that location's number, they encounter the monster there. Oh boy. Okay, so this monster, I guess it's moving around the ship. Uh, eating NPCs, maybe attacking your players. That's cool. All right, failure. If the players leave the base without finding out about and dealing with the monster, it follows them onto their ship. Ooh, okay. 
if you don't solve the mystery, it's coming with you. Oh, no, that's very scary. Okay, and then vents. Uh, so any room with a vent icon, so we see this little bar icon here, uh, connects to any other room with the same icon. Somewhere in the vents is a discarded cassette, cassette number two. There is an emergency control panel within one of the vents that has all the same functions as the workspace computer terminal. Cool. So that's, that's it in terms of like warden notes. Um, so that's easy, just a few things to keep in mind. Uh, so let's go ahead and actually take a look at the map here, because this vents is referring to a map. So relational map. So something I also really enjoy about Mothership is like the way things are designed. It's very thoughtful. So like this is a map of a big space station, but it's relational, which means like you can see, hey, like the players start in st docking bay two and the arrows point to where they can go. So like from the docking bay, you can go into the workspace. From the workspace, you can travel into the quarters or from the workspace down the mine shaft, which is below uh, in space, the workspace. Um, so it's just very thoughtful how they've kind of considered that. Um, it certainly helped me. Oh, 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 it looks like I have my, the monster token right here. Whoa, there's no, nothing in it. I wonder if it's invisible. Oh God, that would be horrible. That would be horrible. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I have my little token moving around. Uh, and I should say what was nice here in this little, um, in the start here section, it did talk about, so the player's handout, um, do, do, do. Oh, the player's map. So accessible via the blue page. Uh, so as the players progress from room to room, you can reveal the rooms by selecting them on the GM layer, accessible from the toolbar and right clicking on the menus that appear. And then, okay, so you can switch the layers to make them visible. Got it. So right now I'm in GM mode, so I can see everything. But basically this isn't what the players would be seeing. They would be seeing things as dark uh, and then I would reveal things by hand. So here we go. I'm going to go to the GM info overlay then, and I'm going to click on, oh, cool. So I can click on the rooms and then I can move them to, ah, so it becomes revealed as my players are in here. So basically then probably what I would do is create um, tokens for each of my characters, similar to this monster here. And then I would put them in the rooms that they're in. And as they travel room to room, I can reveal what they see in each spot, which is very, very cool. I love that they had that instruction right in the start here. That made it very, very easy, very accessible. Love that. Huge fan. Huge fan. So let's look at our next thing. Ooh, cool. So this is how definitely how this would probably appear on the page. Um, this is what a lot of their books look like on the inside. And so it's really about using charts and having organizing information in a very concise and effective way. So this is the relational map all filled in with all the details we need for each area. Uh, but you know, if we don't want to look at it in this format, because it is a little hard to read, they've gone ahead and broken out all of the areas here. Um, so you can pull up this scroll, which seems like it has all of the space, all of the information listed in here, or we can go ahead and do it one by one, which makes it really, really easy to look at. So it looks like we don't have too many locations, which is great, uh, easy to keep a handle on. So docking bay too. So the crew docks here to pick up some cargo en route to a trading satellite. Sonia greets them and authorizes the docking, opening the airlock using the workspace computer. Cool. Um, something I will say about Mothership 2, they really don't overcrowd you with a lot of details. Um, they give you what you need to know about the place, and they really do invite you to make it yours in a lot of ways. So here we go. This is, this is all we need to know about Docking Bay 2. And you can kind of see similar. So I think the workspace is probably the most complicated room here, and that's still not... A huge amount of information. So work boots clang and echo so we know what it sounds like. Heavy but sturdy working gear is stored in cubbies so we know there are cubbies. Uh, there's a generator in one corner. Very helpful bulleting these words making them very large for us. Uh, pickup schedule. Uh, there's a ship called the Heracles. 
docked nearly five weeks ago in Docking Bay. Okay, cool. So I think at this point in my prep, what I would do is I would just go through each one of these locations, read everything it has to say, sort of check around here. Um, and once we get past the locations, of course, we have some of these handouts. So that is the the Ypsilon map, which they also included here. So, and when you look at this version of the map, so this is the same thing we were looking at, but instead of having it relational, this is how it would, you know, appear on like a screen. Uh, so, of course, we see that that workspace, which was that, you know, big central room, we can see where the quarters are connected off of there. So we get a little bit more of an idea of what the bunks might look like. We have the vents. Oh, oh, NPC disappearance. Oh, it's in the corner. It's in the corner. Oh, the trouble with layout. Um, wow, very cool. Monster movement. Oh, so they've got a little table on here. Very cool. And what's the yellow goo? What's going on here? What is this? The yellow goo. If damaged, the monster will retreat to its pod in the mine antechamber, where it will remain for 10 minutes of real time as the yellow goo repairs its injuries. Anyone who comes into direct contact with the yellow goo must make a body save at disadvantage or have their biology slowly rewritten from the inside as the yellow goo attempts to heal them. The first signs of the change is an aversion to water, the victim regains all health and gains advantage on strength checks. However, in 2d10 hours, they will start to melt, losing 1d10 health every 10 minutes until they per turn into a puddle of yellow goo. Ooh, okay, that's concerning. Um, that's very concerning. So body horror, people start to melt, I guess, in this game. So expect that. Awesome, gross, and awesome. Uh, what I'm really, really, okay, I'm really stoked about. So the handouts for this. Uh, so there are three cassette tapes that you can find. So some of these are scattered about the location. So like in the quarters, for example, we have all of, a, it lists all of the NPCs, you know, their bunks, uh, where they are. And I believe somebody had a boom box. Uh, yes, I think somebody had a boom box. Uh, yeah, the bed, the unused for some time, number 10 bunk. The bed is more of a couch now, and there's a games console and a small portable cassette player recorder. So as you find these cassette tapes, uh, you can play them in the game. So blue cassette, scratched, handwritten label, Sonia. And what's very, very fun, you guys is that you can listen to them. They have done this for you. So in the jukebox feature in Roll20, they have loaded the cassettes so we can listen to them and you can play them for your players. So do we want to listen? I want to listen. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Here we go. We're going to play the yellow cassette. This is Mike. I'm not... I'm not okay. Something is wrong. The water... I, I don't know. I can't stay up here for long. I broke the shower. I told someone it was an accident, but... It's the water. I don't think it likes the water. I'm going back into the mine. I need... Quiet. Oh, God, I don't know. Please fix me. I don't... I don't know what's happening. Ah, I love that they included these. Um, so I, I will just say, as a, as a podcaster, I was stoked to see that they had these files on here. Uh, wow, gosh, what a, what a cool immersion tool. So in the middle of playing, uh, what's really great, I mean, these are already loaded into the jukebox, which is a feature that you always have on Roll20, uh, and they make it really easy for you to, you know, put in your own MP3s or upload audio or whatever you want. If you want to play background music through Roll20, uh, you can absolutely do that. Uh, yeah, McFappin's Mike definitely got good. Um, let's be real. Mike is dead. Uh, <laughs> Mike is super dead. Oh, God. Okay, I, I'm, I want to listen to another one. Because whatever. Because whatever. Uh, blue cassette. So this is the scratched handwritten label, Sonia. 
Oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. Blue cassette. This is more like actual music. I wonder if they like recorded a whole song for this. This is a bop. Okay, all right. Okay, so just like a cool a blue herring, if you will. All right, well, here's the white cassette, though. Initial reports confirmed. Subject appears to be biochemical in nature. Place of origin suggests medical use, though that's not much of a theory. Disappearance of worker 7709, likely unrelated. Possible negative reaction to water? Not yet clear. I'll follow this up in the morning. Initial positive result on the substance's medical properties. Whether it's possible to control its effect. Oh, cool. So that's like a science report? So these are scattered throughout the module. Um, of course, people can find these cassette tapes and they get clues from them or get to listen to bops. You know, whatever. Both are valid. Both are valid. Uh, wow, that's extremely cool. I'm going to put that, the, the cool relational map again. Um, but hey, awesome. Love that. Love, love handouts. Uh, <laughs> cool. So with the locations, we have our handouts, and then that brings us to our NPCs. So what's, oh God, what's so nice is that all of the NPCs have already been loaded in here. So those 10 NPCs who go missing, they're already here. They're ready uh, it looks like we, we get in the NPC block, we get descriptions of each of them, uh, which is nice. It's just, and they, again, mothership is great on the brevity. So like Dana, head driller, stoic, professional, sullen, great. Uh, and we have like Kentaro, loader, muscular, quiet, hasn't bathed in a few days, is infected with the yellow goo. Oh, there we go. You rascal, Kentaro. Uh, and... Wow, cool. And so this is all just the information, really quick detail they've given you in the NPCs. But you can also go specifically onto each NPC and they've drawn little portraits of them all and also give you uh, details. So like Sonia is the team leader at the base, wants to find out what's going on. She reported traces of a strange substance, the yellow goo, found in the mine a couple of months ago, but hasn't thought much about it since. Oh, Sonia. I was foolish. Mike has been acting a little odd since they found it. Mike! This guy! Oh, this poor guy. He never stood a chance. Oh, like, look, let's look at Mike. Oh, oh, R.A.P. Mike. You looked like a kind of a nice but weird old man. Oh, mining engineer disappeared last night. Nobody knows why or where he is. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And even better, so this is something I would probably do as part of my prep first. I like to make sure that all of my tokens for whatever monsters or NPCs that are going to be there are already loaded on the map. So what's really awesome is since these NPCs are going to be walking around, I can just go ahead and drag them here from the NPCs and put them on the map. So I can just put them wherever they are at the time. So if I wanted this guy, Dr. Ethan Giovanni... To be in the quarters boom i just leave him right here which is a great indication so when my players walk into each of these rooms it's immediately a visual clue for me to know who is there and then also they instantly realize that there are people in the room with them so what i would probably do is go through each of the locations and then just make sure where everybody is so like docking bay 2 it looks like sonia greets my players and authorizes docking so i'm gonna go ahead and put Sonia, scroll down, find Sonia, and put her in Docking Bay 2. Bam! So she's ready. She's there to greet everybody. Uh, you know, I'm going to go through, look at Ashraf. Breaker, short, accommodating, naive. Oh, buddy. Okay, I'm going to put you accommodating and naive, huh? Are you taking a shower? Are you, yeah, probably getting a snack. Let's put you in here. Having a snack. Uh, Dana, head driller, stoic, professional, sullen, 
I feel very connected to Dana <laughs> for some reason. Uh, oh man, she's probably working. Stoic Dana, classic Dana. Oh no, I'm gonna be so sad when they start going missing. I'm already so attached. Oh boy. Oh my god, and Prince, hey everybody, there's a cat. There's a cat here. Let's look at Prince. Prince, brought aboard against regulations by Morgan, hates baths, can see the monster. Whoa. Okay, so the cat, the cat is, okay, okay, let's read about this monster we keep hearing about. So the monster is, of course, also a token here, and it looks like, I'm, I'm going to guess they're invisible. I'm going to guess they're invisible. Cool. So yeah, when we hover over the monster, uh, we see bio and info. It's obviously a little bit more detailed here since we need stats uh, in case the monster does attack people uh, or is attacked over the course of this game. Though something I really enjoy about Mothership is that they specifically say at the beginning of the combat section, combat is almost always deadly in Mothership and should be avoided at all costs. Uh, so they absolutely recommend running, hiding, not confronting things directly in Mothership. This is more a game about getting away and surviving and figuring out the best ways to to deal with things without direct confrontation. Uh, because so, so much is so much scarier than you. So much scarier than you. Uh, so the monster, and of course, you can also look at it as a character sheet. So these, whoa, red when you hover over it. That's very intimidating. <sighs> I'm scared. So, of course, you can look at the character sheet. That's very similar to the player character sheets, except a little pared down. Uh, so we have its combat score is 70. So since we're trying to roll under our numbers, that means that the, the monster would almost certainly hit every time. Uh, so yes, going back to the whole combat is very deadly in Mothership. That, that certainly supports this. Uh, Devour is one of its special abilities. Mouth uses powerful suction and circular rows of sharp teeth to devour its prey. Oh boy. Uh, once devoured players must make body saves every round or take a critical hit. Devour leaves no trace consuming any and all organic material. The victim appearing to vanish chunk by chunk as it enters the monster invisible digestive digestive track oh god <laughs> um can can wow yep an invisible predator there it is oh god it's invisible uh biosonar blind uses echolocation to hunt yellow goo Oh god, water vulnerability. So that's that's the good thing. If you can figure out it hates water, avoiding it if, if possible and even abandoning an attack in favor of staying dry. So usually the monsters have little things like this or little like hooks built in to help you defeat them. So like for example, I know that in one of the locations, so in the docking bay, that ship, the Heracles that's been stationed there has a scientist on board who's been studying the goo. And the scientist is wearing a pair of infrared goggles. So if you get to the scientist and deal with him, you can see the creature with the infrared goggles. So there's lots of these like little details woven into this adventure. And then most of the, the mothership adventures I've seen, the creativity behind these modules is just staggering. And uh, certainly Epsilon is no exception. Oh, also, here we go. Look at this sentence. Dr. Ethan Giovanni stands here, silent, smiling. Slowly, his mouth widens and yellow goo dribbles out, leaking from his throat like albumin. He lunges for you, grinning wide and crying yellow. Ooh. <laughs> so, yeah, yes. Yes, Robo Goblin, you should tell that to your players that combat is very deadly. Because if... Oh my god, if these players are used to, you know, some fantasy some fantasy role-playing games, we know combat might be their first option, and they will quickly, quickly die. Uh, just, just quickly die. Yeah, so, I mean, that's all, everything you get with this, this module. Um, so we have your NPCs, your tokens, your handouts, um, the whole adventure in here, um... And like I said, it's really just these like these locations that have everything you need. Uh, you know, it doesn't take up your time by forcing you to read walls of text. You know, the novel of the story before you dive in. It really does leave a lot up to you about the connecting pieces, and it just provides you the exact details you need 
to run this module. So I'm a big fan. I was able to like read and go over all of this in less than an hour, which is huge, especially for, you know, a, a low prep game. Uh, I would feel very comfortable picking this up, running this the same night for my friends. So highly recommend. I think they did a really great job. And of course, all the tools. I love just the simplified map, the way it looks on virtual, you know, the virtual tabletop. Uh, and then also the jukebox, those audio files. Big fan. Big fan of this. Uh, I think Roll20 did an awesome job uh, with this. So super duper excited. And of course, something we didn't look at too is we've been focusing a lot on the module side of things. But, you know, since you do get the player survival guide also with the starter kit, that means you have full access to the rules. And you as the warden or, you know, the person running the game in Roll20 can decide how much of that book you want to share with your players or not. So we can see here that up if we scroll back up to the, the little I for information, so the compendium, we do have all of the rules that are loaded in here. So sorted by class, items, mercenaries, miscellaneous rules, ship modules, ships. So these are all of the things that are covered in this, the uh, player survival guide. So I'm just going to hit rules. Uh, and it has them all broken into, you know, nice, easy, referable sections. So if you have any questions, you can head on over. So let's just pop open basic rules. So what's great here is, yeah, they really, they spell everything out for you. They keep it very sharp, very simple. I mean, look at this. This is all you need. This, these are the basic rules that will basically, this is all the players need to know. Uh, and the rest of this stuff is stuff that is situational. Uh, I would say good to know as a GM, but certainly they make it so convenient for you to just flip open whatever you need. Uh, that it just, it's, it's really great. Uh, huge fan of the rules. Like also look at some of this, this weird art. <laughs> There's so much, I love their weird art style through the whole thing. Um, let's see, let's see if we can find more weird art. Yeah. So it's got compendium support in here. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, salty. Um, so like we can look at the equipment. Oop, maybe not. Maybe not the equipment. Let's go back and look at the rules in general. Leveling up, mercenary, yeah. The combat is a good one to look at. So if you ever have a question about combat, you can go ahead and just break out the compendium. Uh, and it goes through everything you need here. How do I attack when you want to? Uh, oh, more of that. That I don't even know what you call this black and white squiggle style. How do I heal? Unconsciousness and death? Uh, there's just so much good stuff. There's so much good stuff in here. Experience points. I'm just looking for more cool, cool, sketchy art. Oh, uh, yeah. But anyway, yeah, that's the compendium. Uh, that is the module. Uh, both of these things come in that, that starting pack there. So, I mean, yeah, for those of you in chat, I, I hope you're thinking about picking this up and checking this out. Like I said, I have definitely been a, a Mothership fan f since those since that gang at the uh, at PAX Unplugged grabbed me and showed me these modules. Um, and right now, of course, Epsilon uh, is a great place to start because it is a one-shot module. It is designed to be very small, played in a night. Uh, which is fabulous for a starting point. Uh, but they also do have some other great modules out there, including, um, I'm forgetting the name of it. Uh, there's one that's like all about sort of like the Tempest themed where you're on like a space station. And uh, it's a lot of the same kind of like locations, interesting NPCs, hooks that you can use to weave together uh, a story. So highly recommend. Mothership is super great. Um, that's pretty much all I've got for you all. So I hope you feel prepared. I hope you <laughs> know what you're in for when you sign up for Mothership. Uh, like I said at the beginning, my name is Celeste Konowich. I am a full-time game designer with 2C Gaming, but I do a lot of freelance work as well uh, with companies like Wizards of the Coast, MCDM Productions. Uh, and I had the pleasure of being the GM for the, the science fantasy burn bright series that debuted on roll 20 uh so if you want to see me gming something a little bit lighter <laughs> you can always check that out uh but please do you know follow me on socials at c Conowich. let me know what you think 
of Mothership. Uh, I hope you come to enjoy this game as much as I did. Uh, thank you so much to Roll20 for having me. And of course, uh, head on over to uh, Roll20.io Mothership dash starter and go ahead and pick up uh pick up your version get the haunting a epsilon terrify your players fill them with goo uh, <laughs> gross sorry sorry i said that uh <laughs> but that's it thank you everybody so much for having me and um i'll catch you later catch you later in the cold darkness of space all right everybody have a great one